Hey, what I want to do in this video is go over what an annotated bibliography is and is not, uh, and how to write one. I think there's a lot of confusion out there on what an annotated bibliography is, uh, and then how to go about uh, doing one. So uh, I have to kind of do one myself. I thought we might do it together. So what is an annotated bibliography? Uh, it's nothing more than a summary of the sources that you're using in a research project. So I'm going to, whoops, annotated bib. It is a summary. So I need to know what the source is. Whoops, I'll try to type this right. What was the research? Uh, what were the findings? What's the impact or the relevancy to what you're doing? That's it. That's all you have to do to do an annotation on a research paper. So, um, this is where it gets a little tricky for people. How do you go about actually writing one? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set this up as a formal paper. Times New Roman 12 point font. We're going to go double space because that's what it should be. And then I'm going to start with my first citation. Now, I've got a lot of my articles already. I'm writing um, an article right now on what's called the Ferguson Effect. And uh, I'm going to start out by going alphabetical. Now, I'm going to skip the first article here because it's actually a magazine. But uh, this one's not. This one's someone's dissertation. Now, um, I would normally read this. And I would mark it up. And you can see I've got it here in my Mendeley. This was someone's dissertation. And you kind of have to learn to skip to what the research is about. So this one is the general population is that although a decision to use deadly force by law enforcement officers may be justified, there is inherent negative perception and evaluation of such force, which is created by administrative and public review. If there is a difference in law enforcement reaction times during deadly force encounters based on the events of law enforcement's use between deadly, um, 2014 and 2015 and the inherent negativity towards law enforcement based on these events. Uh, all right, so here we go. The purpose of this quantitative true experimental research was to examine the effect of negative public perception on law enforcement decision-making abilities. So... That's what I'm going to start with. Uh, the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to copy this as a formatted citation. And then I'm going to bring Word back up. And I'm going to paste this as a formatted citation. Now, I also i am going to double space it. So this is how it first goes. They start out alphabetically. You put your citation in. The research conducted by Giordino, Giordano, oops, examined the, uh, and I want to bring it up on my other monitor here just so I can, I can paraphrase it a little bit. Let's see here. Yes, I closed that and didn't mean to. of um, negative public perception on the decision, whoops, this part does not need to be taken in a half. Come on, there we go.
of law enforcement agencies. Um, and simulated use of force scenarios. So that's actually the, the first uh, the first sentence that tells me what the research is. Um, the research was an experimental design. Experimental design with multiple data types collected. Then I'm going to go down to what did he find? I assume it's a he. I shouldn't assume. What did Giardino, Giardino find? So let's. I'm going to skip down to his findings or her findings. And there were several tests conducted. So let me just kind of scroll down past those and we'll get to the findings here. Here we go. Uh, all right, so English. Okay, I'm just kind of going through the questions. Caucasian, 81% of the respondents. Wow. Uh, the results of question nine indicated that the majority of respondents to this research were satisfied with the treatment they received within the communities they work in. 42% of them said they were neutral or better. 2% said they were dissatisfied. 97% believe the communities they serve support law enforcement. That's a pretty big finding. So I can say that 97% of respondents uh, felt supported. You know, you see, you see how I'm putting this in my own words? So, 96% um, also felt that they were respected by the same community. Those are pretty good findings. And 90% believe that the community would treat them fairly uh, in the after a possible shooting. So now, that's basically all there is to the research. Um, I'm going to stop the findings there. They went on to a lot more in the demographics. But that's the question I'm asking about is, do they think they'd be treated fairly? Do they think they would be treated well? Um, or is there a negative effect after a police shooting? Uh, and what do officers think? This, this officer perception... Uh, 
uh, differs from the basics of the basis of the Ferguson effect. That's it. So what I've done is I've said what the research is, what's the source? That's the that's the little section right here. This is the source. Uh, what was the research? I've done that. Uh, what were the findings? Here were the findings. And what is the relevancy? This officer perception differs from what we would describe in the basic foundations of the Ferguson effect. Guys, that's it. That's all you have to do. And then you go on to your next source. So for me, I would go on alphabetically to my next source. And I'll copy this as a formatted citation. I'll drop down here. I will paste this in. Except it didn't drop down where it should have. I will double space it because it never does that right. I'll drop back down to here and begin writing my next one. That's all you have to do for an annotated bibliography. And you do this for each source that you have. So what I have is I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sources so far. So I would do ten of these. And the reason that you do this is that these paragraphs that you write here are the basis for what you're going to do in a literature review. In a literature review, you take all of these annotations and you put them together. You don't just copy and paste them together, but you you weave them together using uh, transition sentences and discussion sentences. Uh, and so you're, you're really doing the legwork of a literature review through the annotated bibliography. So this is how you go about writing an annotated bibliography. And I think it kind of helps uh, reduce some of the stress students feel uh, because they've never seen one done. They've never had one explained to them. But really, this is all you have to do. Answer these four to five questions. What's the source? What's the research? What were the findings? What is the relevancy to what you're doing? Um, and then, of course, citing and formatting is, is appropriate. You have to do that. But then you just go through the list. Uh, and if you're told to go find articles, well, then go find articles that relate to your research subject. My research subject right now is the Ferguson effect. So I hope this explains a lot more. I hope this is uh, something that uh, is helpful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to email me um, or comment on the video itself. That's fine too. But ultimately, you just do this until you've run out of your sources. Um, and it really helps you organize your thoughts and ideas. It helps you organize your sources into groups. Uh, although I do this one alphabetically, if I have other researchers that come along and say that this is differs from the Ferguson effect, then I would put those together in my literature review, or I could at least group them together by uh, kinds. I could do a pro and con. Uh, it really helps you obtain where the research is on this subject matter. Okay, I'll stop the video here. I hope it's been helpful to you, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot, guys.